going on, everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve, and this is Maple and Honey. These days, companies are doing a lot of weird things, a lot of different things to the whiskeys. I guess to diversify their whiskeys and to appeal to a lot of the whiskey drinkers that are not just regular whiskeys, but maybe they want some something different. So you know, they have sweet whiskeys, they got you know flavor whiskey, they got peanut butter whiskeys that are very popular right now. One of the more popular things that are happening to whiskeys are finished whiskeys, more specifically charred barrel finished or toasted barrel finished. And today we have two rye whiskeys that are very popular, very high in demand, allocated as well, that are not just normal rye whiskeys, but they're finished in toasted barrels or charred barrels. So we'll try these two whiskeys side by side and, and I'll let you know what my thoughts are at the end, uh, which one comes out on top out of these two. First of all, we have the Jack Daniels twice barreled Tennessee whiskey coming in at 100 proof and 50% alcohol. It's a 2023 edition. So this is one of the limited edition bottles that Jack Daniels releases once a year. I got this bottle for $80 or so, $70 or so. It's not that cheap, but I mean, it's not over hundred bucks. So that's bottle number one. And to the right of me, I have the Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish Barrel Strength Rye Whiskey. This bottle is higher proof than the Jack Daniels. It comes in at 109.6 proof, 54.8% alcohol. This is Michter's version of their toasted or charred barrel finish rye whiskey. It's a little bit more expensive than the Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, you know, like I said, $70, $80. This one is actually $120, $130. I think I got it for $120-ish, $119 at BevMoy, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, you know, in liquor stores or your secondaries, I think it's going for $200, $300, which is pretty high, which is pretty high. But again, this one's a good one, very popular. It's also toasted finish. So we'll compare these two and see what's what. I poured the whiskeys about 20 minutes ago, so it should be aired out by now. So let's give it a nose and let's get going. First, the Jack. It's like a, a toasted marshmallow, you know, over the campfire. Uh, you, you roast the marshmallow and it got burned a little bit, and that smell. Uh, very distinct smell is coming through. A little wood chippy scent coming through, but it's also very sweet, very sweet. Let's go for a sip. Cheers, everyone. It's sort of like a bitter, not overly bitter, but like a coffee, like you're chewing on coffee bean, uh, roasted coffee bean. That coffee finish, sweet and bitterness combined together. And it's pretty good, I like it. I'm not you know, trying to sort through the alcohol here. 100 proofs, very manageable on the palate. To coffee and really molasses, coffee and molasses. You know, I don't know if you, we go camping a lot, my kids and I, and you know, a lot of times my kids burn the marshmallows over the campfire, and a lot of times I end up eating it if it's overly done. And it's that exact flavor is in here, that burnt outer crust of the marshmallow. It's spot on, that taste is, I don't know how they bottled it, but it's in there, that's very distinct. A Little bit of cinnamon spice notes coming through. And like I said, it's not bitter alone. It's bitter and sweet together, as if you're drinking like a, like a coffee, but with slight sweetener in there. So it had that bitterness and the sweets sort of meshed together. The charred oak is, is there, I think it's sort of, commingled with the bitterness and it sort of puts the underlying tone of the whiskey. Let's go for a third sip. It's a little different. It's definitely different than a regular rye would taste. That charred oak is, yeah, it's definitely there. That toastiness, that little bit darker toastiness. It's, I think the mash bill is around 70% rye and like 10% corn and 10 some percent barley. So it's pretty high on the rye mash bill. So it sh I should be tasting some like a you know very peppery, very leafy, greeny notes in there, but I don't really get that. I get a lot of cinnamon. I get a lot of like a molasses, thick molasses. Um, I get uh, coffee notes. I mean, coffee notes are very pre prevalent here. And like a bitter top, like you chewing on a coffee bean. If you could imagine chewing on a coffee bean and you are eating a toasted marshmallow right after together in your mouth. That's the best description I could give you for this whiskey. Uh, it's very good, it's very delicious actually. It's very delicious, I like it, I enjoy it. I think 100 is a good proof to be at. 
uh, you know, it's not too hot and it's, it's not too weak. Very easy to drink. So, all right, let's move on to the next, the Michter's Toasted Rye Barrel Strength. Here, let's go for our nose first. For our nose. The nose on the Jag, even though it's 10 proof less ish, it's much stronger. More more ethanol just flowing out of the out of the glen. And this one, melted brown sugar when you're baking or whatnot. That brown sugar scent is coming right out. And I got a lot of the, like a like burnt marshmallow scent over here, but I didn't get, I'm not getting that here. All right, let's go for a sip. This is 110 proof, almost 110. That's a 109.6, but it actually drinks much less than that. Um, almost same as this, or it's not even lower on the, the burn. And there's no coffee or deep char notes in here. Dark brown sugar, toffee, like melted toffee. The finish is real good on this one. So I think it lingers uh, a bit longer than the Jack Daniels. It's more caramelly than this. It's more sweeter. The toast in this sort of takes a back seat to the sweets. The mash bill on this is, I think, you know, 50 some percent rye, 30 some percent corn. So it's pretty much a bourbon, almost a bourbon, barely a rye. So I would expect, you know, it makes sense that it's sweeter, less rye-ish than this. I, I remember this one being very, you know, toasty too, but it's, I'm not detecting that today. Sweet with the slight toasty oak at the bottom. A little spicy finish at the end, but for the most part, I think the finish is better on this one. I don't know if it's because of the proof. The finish is more lingering. It has a little bit of a lingering finish that this sort of coats you better. It has a little bit richer mouthfeel, a thicker feel in your mouth and the palate. Thick vanilla, brown sugars, caramelly. I, I almost, I could almost say this, this could pass as a bourbon, not really, I guess you could, that toastiness is actually there. So it'll just give it away real fast, but it's very close to a bourbon, aside from that toasty feel at the, at, that the, sort of surrounds all the flavors. The finish, however, is much better than this one. Much better than the Jack Daniel, I have to say. Right now, you know, it's been, it's been a little bit, but I still have that finished little tingle of toastiness in, in my mouth. It's that oak, that deep oak taste that sort of stays there, a little bit toastiness that stays there. And it's very pleasant, very pleasurable. I like that, I like that. This one was a little bit hasty in its, in its offering, I felt like. Um, but this one, the finish is delicious. The finish is actually very, very welcoming. So that's that. Let's compare these two side by side. What would I pick? It's a tough choice. It's a tough choice. You know, the strength of Jack Daniels is that it has a multitude of flavors, right? The burnt marshmallow notes, burnt brown sugar notes, has that coffee, that bitter taste coffee that you're chewing on a coffee bean sort of, but has a little bit of sweets mixed in there with it. That's the strength of the Jack Daniels. I think it has like a multiple prongs of flavors coming through. The downside of Jack is that it, the finish is a little bit lacking. All the flavors are just presented to you right away in the palate. It comes to you, hits you right, right from the bat, and and it sort of disappears after that. And the finish is sort of subpar, you know, I would say. The mouthfeel is a little bit thinner uh, than the Michter's, I would say. The pros of the Michter's, I think it's definitely the finish. The finish, it lingers and lingers. I think it gives you that, that deep uh, finish that you long for. It, its flavors are very sweet, so it's very close to bourbon. So if you like bourbons, I think this might you know, be right along your alley, you know, like me. It's very deep in the finish, very satisfactory in this in this mouthfeel and the finish delivery part. So so between these two, oh man, it's a tough choice. It's a tough choice. I mean, I like rice. I would definitely like rice, and I definitely like these two. You know, considering the pros and cons for these bottles, I'm gonna give a slight edge to the Mictors. Because I, you know, I put a lot of emphasis on finish. I think finish, I don't feel watch my other episodes, but finish is a big deal for me. If I drink something and then it just disappears within a second, it sort of, you know, kills the experience, I feel like. Even if its flavors are, you know, bountiful, if flavors are just lively, but it just goes away within a second, I think that sort of kills 
the whole experience. And in drinking whiskey, drinking bourbon, drinking anything is a journey. It's an experience that you long for. It's not just about the quick flavors and done, uh, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, it's very close. It, the Jack Daniels is a flavor bomb. You know, it has so many flavors and there's so many complexity in, the, in its flavors. And even though it's 100 proof, it gives you so much on the palate when you get it. But I think it's very niche on what it's catering towards too. They're both from charred barrels. They're both from toasted barrels, but this is very toasted. Whereas this is toasted, a little bit of toasted with the bourbon-ish offering to it with a nice finish. Where this is a lot of toasted, a lot of bitterness, with a lot of sweetness all together, and then eh, that's it. Uh, sort of that sort of fizzles really fast. So I don't know, maybe your experience is different, but I think this one is is a second uh, to to the Victor's uh, toasted barrel finish. Well, that's all I have for you today. Do you agree with me that this is a better whiskey out of these two? Let me know at the comment section. I'm happy to respond. So thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate your time. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.